Hello and welcome to an introduction to Adobe Digital Publishing Suite. My name is Brian Wood and I'm going to be taking you through this. So what I'd like to do is start out just by talking to you about what DPS is. That's the acronym for Digital Publishing Suite. I'm on the Adobe page here. This is the Adobe product page. And just, I'm not going to take you through all the marketing stuff, okay? We're going to go through and show you what it actually is. We can use Adobe InDesign to create apps, which we can sell on app stores. And just to give you an example, if I go over here and show you my iPad, you can see that, let's suppose that we wanted to sell something on the Apple App Store. Well, we can create an InDesign and then use the Adobe Digital Publishing Suite to be able to create the actual app file, give it to Apple and say, please sell it on your store and hopefully they'll accept it. You can see right here that I've got one that I've created. This is what we're gonna create in class here. This is called Pinnacle PG. It's for Pinnacle Playground. It's a company that I made up. So it's, and it's not mind blowing. It's not the best design in the world, but I'm just here to show you how this works, okay? So how do we get from just knowing what DPS is, at least just hearing about it, to this point where we create an app and I can sell it? Well, let's talk about that process. I'm gonna go over to this buying guide. Now, when you first start this, know that you're gonna use Adobe InDesign to create the content. It's pretty much like working on your print content. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna create it. We then need to plunk down a little bit of money to be able to create the app, okay? Adobe's gonna go through the process of creating it for us, which is really, really cool. There's a lot of ways you can do this. So if you go to create your designs in InDesign and then you're ready to create an app out of it, don't worry, we'll go through that whole process. You've got basically four ways you can pay or buy into it. If you are a Creative Cloud subscriber, you get to do it included. You get to create as many apps as you want included. Now, the, the, one of the catches here is that you can only create an app for the iPad. That's it. Not iPhone, nothing else, no Android, no nothing. You can only create it for the iPad. So if you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, you can create as many as you want. You can update them as long as you have a Creative Cloud subscription. If you don't want to go to Creative Cloud route and you have InDesign CS5, CS5.5, or CS6, you can buy a single edition. It's like, uh, I think it's like $3.95 or something like that. Don't quote me on the price. You'll, you can find out yourself. But it allows you to create a single app that you can sell on the iPad, on the app store for the iPad, and you can update it for up to, I believe it's like a calendar year. So you can update it. If you decide to go a little further and you want to go to professional or enterprise editions, you get a lot more bells and whistles. And with professional edition and enterprise, you get to create apps that you can sell on different stores, not just for iPad. So you can see right here, Apple App Store, Amazon Kindle Fire, et cetera, et cetera, Android Marketplace, et cetera. So you kind of have to decide which way you're going to go. If you're a larger company that's going to do a lot of these, professional enterprise is probably a good idea. If you're a single user, you know, within a company or yourself, eh, Creative Cloud, if you're already there, cool, single edition, maybe. Now, we are going to go through this process of creating the content and talking about creating the app focused on Creative Cloud and single edition. These two right here, they're pretty much the same thing as far as creating the app. So if you are a professional enterprise, you'll still be able to get a lot from this. You'll still be able to learn how to create it, et cetera, but we're not going to create for others just the iPad. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into Creative Cloud, and I'm a subscriber, so I'm going to kind of show you what it looks like. So if I go to my Creative Cloud website, this is where you, you get a website. They essentially give you a URL. And what you can do is you can log in. And, of course, I could have already logged in, but I didn't. Do this. I feel like I log in every second of every day on every website. All right. Enough complaining. So there we go. We're getting Adobe Creative Cloud. You can see that as a Creative Cloud subscriber, if I go over to the apps, let me go over here. There's a couple ways to get here. You'll see that these are all the applications I can download and just put on my machine and work with. If I scroll down, I'll see right here. Let me zoom in a bit. Digital Publishing Suite Single Edition. So as a Creative Cloud subscriber, I don't have to do anything special. As soon as I sign up for this and I have an Adobe ID, that's what they usually make you sign in with, then you're, you're set. You just have to have InDesign and you can start creating these and creating apps and be on your merry way. It's really pretty cool. Create as many as you want and update as long as you're a subscriber. Now, let's talk about the process here. I'm going to show you a little bit about the process of what, what happens, okay? I've got a website here. Uh, this is the Adobe website, which has kind of a visual overview focusing on single edition, the one I was talking about with Creative Cloud. 
And here's the kind of the, the generic process of how to build these things, how to make them. We start in InDesign. Like I already said, you can start in InDesign CS5, CS5.5, or CS6. If you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, you're probably going to have CS6. You create your layouts like you normally would in print. There's just a few things you got to kind of, you know, focus on, like page size and things like that. A few little nitpicky things. Look right here. Then what you do is you take your InDesign content, and you're going to kind of put it all together. It's, to me, it's almost kind of like creating a book. If you've ever worked on a book in InDesign and used a book file, you're going to create what's called a folio. Folio is just a bunch of InDesign files that it kind of brings together. You're going to add a lot of interactivity to it, really cool things like video and links and all sorts of stuff. And you're going to take that content and send it to something called the DPS App Builder. It's all part of what you basically buy into. The App Builder is actually an application that sits on your hard drive, and you can open it up and right from InDesign. As a matter of fact, InDesign will open it for you. In that App Builder, it creates the actual file that you give to the App Store. So you can see right here, here's a DPS app file. You then, as a single edition subscriber, take that little file that they give you, and you go to Apple and say, here, here's the file, please accept it. And they have a choice of, you know, hey, we don't want it, or yes, go ahead. And you can sell it on the App Store, iPad specific, uh, or you can, you can even give it away for free if you really want to. Now, in that process, while we're building this thing and we're going through the, all this, if you look down here, you can see you can also share it with people. So let's suppose kind of partway through you decide, well, I'm creating my layouts. I'm doing my thing. I think it looks awesome. Now I'd like to share it with somebody else just so they can look at it. Okay. So you want to get a little feedback or something like that. Well, there's a couple ways you can do it. And we will go through all of this. Don't worry. But directly from within InDesign, you can open up a panel that we're going to work with. And you can say, hey, share it with Joe or share it with Sharon. You can put an email address in and it sends them an email and says, hey, go look at it. You can also do it through a website called Folio Producer Service. Don't worry about it. We'll take a look at it. You can share it with people. They can kind of take a look at it. They can look at it either on their desktop or in an iPad. Or they can go through the, um, the website, Folio Producer Service, and take a look at it. So while we're building this, we can share it with people and have them look at it. Okay. Here's what we're going to do now. We're going to take a look at an app and just kind of quickly break it down. And that should hopefully round out what all this is about, okay? So I know we're going to take a look at an app I just said, but let's go to InDesign real quick, and I'm going to show you a couple things that you use to build this. If you're in InDesign CS6, which I'm, you probably are at this point, we have a workspace called Digital Publishing that we can set, that we can use. And it just opens up a bunch of panels. If you're in InDesign CS5 or CS5.5, you can always open all the panels you see over here on your own. Two big panels that we are going to focus on for creating this are called the Folio Overlays panel. You can see it right here. And the Folio Builder panel. The Folio Overlays panel is where we go to select stuff, like let's say text or a picture or something like that, and add interactivity. An overlay is the interactive content that kind of sits on top of your design. And we'll talk more about that later. So for instance, if I scroll down here and I have this a picture, I can make a slideshow out of it. And you can see right here, it's saying, oh, hey, let's set up a slideshow and here's all the stuff we can do. So this is where we add interactivity. If I go to the Folio Builder panel, the Folio Builder panel is where we build the, essentially assemble, I should say, the InDesign files that are eventually going to become the app. So you're going to create a bunch of InDesign files. A Folio is sort of a... Uh, I guess you can call it a testing app. It's sort of a, on your way to making an app. It just organizes all your files and puts them together. So you're going to create as many folios as you need, and each one of these is basically going to become eventually a separate app. For instance, here's one we're going to create. If I double-click on this, I can see that I've got a lot of pieces to it, a cover, a table of contents. We'll go look at it in the actual app. And each one of these is a separate InDesign file or separate InDesign files, if I double-click, that you can see. So landscape, I open this up and you can see there is my InDesign file. So it's a series of InDesign files that we put together to make this app. So this is the cover, okay? And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over to my iPad and show you what this final app looks like. So let me go over and show you. There it is right there. And I'm just testing this thing. So let me tap on that. I'll open it up and let me get to the home page here. And you should be able to see that there is, whoops, there's my app. This is an InDesign file. When we work with an app like this, what we can do is we can scroll over, we can create links, 
We can have scrolling horizontally. We can have scrolling vertically. We can have what are called smooth scrolling articles. There's a lot of things we can do with this to be able to make it so that people can, you know, get the content they need and go on. Now, just to show you exactly how this is built, so you can see I'm kind of going side to side, right? So I go back and forth. We'll check this out. This is actually kind of cool. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, and you'll see that this is how it's actually created. We have what are called articles. These articles, are, which are vertical, you can see right here, vertical. Each one of these, in my case, is a separate InDesign document or multiple documents, usually one document. So I've got one InDesign file here, one here, and one here. If you have an InDesign file with one page, it's just going to have a single page that kind of snaps into the viewer. If you have an InDesign file with a bunch of pages, you can scroll vertically, usually. So we're just creating a series of InDesign files, and we're putting them in a, an order we want to show them in. We create this app file. It creates it using the app builder, and we've got ourselves an app. Okay. Now we're going to go through a little bit more how to set up the, the folders, how it's all structured, how it all works, et cetera, in one of the next videos. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have everything we need to get started.